Good to see you. I think you told investors recently that the slump in deals was like Groundhog Day. Is yeah. it Groundhog Day here in Switzerland? Actually, it, you know, I don't think it's going to be Groundhog Day. Last year was. I had earnings calls five in a row where I said the same thing I said the previous call, which was green shoots, the market's going to get better, everything's great. And then I woke up one day to Sonny and Cher, the song, and I knew I was in Groundhog's Day. But I, I actually think we're going to have a, a better year this year. What are you seeing that's changing? What's um, and changing, I, you know, the, the, the market, and as I've been listening to some of your guests, and it's interesting to me about uh, the diversity of pin, opinion about rates and stuff. Where we, where we stand on this is that we think earnings are growing. The street thinks 11 percent. We think half. Um, the street thinks that uh, rates are going to be cut six times starting in March. I'm not there. Okay, I can tell you why on, on that. We, we think two to three times. But that is the definition of a soft landing. Uh, you know, cutting rates into a growing market. Now, you know, if you, every uh, hard landing starts with a soft landing. And uh, so if some of your other guests are right about uh, recessions, well, then that changes the game. Well, Ann Walsh was on earlier, and she thinks that we are probably heading toward a bit of a harder uh, situation and that that's why we will get rate cuts sooner. She's concerned about regional banks, particularly because small and medium-sized businesses are not doing as well. Do you share her concern? Not really. I think the banking system has gone through a, a very difficult 500 basis point increase in short rates. The related deposit sorting, the uh, you know some of the credit concerns. I mean, there's always concerns, but uh, today the regional banks are stronger. Uh, of, of course, if you have a real credit meltdown, uh, it's, it's going to impact a lot of people, not just the regional banks. When you talk about credit meltdown, I was just noticing that we're having the busiest January issuance for uh, investment-grade bonds going back to 2017. How much are companies front-loading this ahead of the election, are front-loading all of their deal-making ahead of what they're expecting to be a lot more turmoil later in the year? I, I don't know if I'd call it front-loading. Uh, the, the, we've been in a recession in investment banking, uh, equity investment banking in the United States for almost 18 months. And the uncertainty with the rate curve, the inverted rate curve, all all of this put uh, an absolute damper on capital raising, whether it be debt or equity. And uh, today, there's a little bit of certainty back in the market. And so what you're saying is activity picking up. That's why your guy from Canada was excited. That's why I'm telling you, I think that next year is going to be It was better. more than just excited. <laughs> was it? Just, okay. just a little bit. Right, just a little bit. Right. Coming out of the pandemic, things were busy. People were gearing up for a lot of activity. They were hiring, hiring, hiring. You talked about the recession in banking, certain parts of banking. Are we done with the so-called right-sizing, a word that here at Bloomberg Surveillance we hate because ultimately it means job cuts? Are we done with that now, do you think, on Wall Street? You know, I think what's happened on, on Wall Street, yeah. uh, I, I do. I do. I think that, in fact, you're seeing a lot of people hiring. Uh, in fact, some of, some of the people are hiring uh, are very optimistic as to the rebound that I think we're going to see. Uh, but I do. I think that the right sizing is done. You know, in the overall economy, though, what has happened is uh, we're, we're burning through the job postings and uh, versus, you know, the, the, the overall employment is is changing a little bit in terms of, of economic activity. But again, most things point to a rather sanguine environment, which is good for, certainly good for my business. Take some volatility out of it. Are you hiring? Uh, we always are hiring. Okay. okay. That's, I figured that you might say that. I'm curious, right. as you look forward, what's the potential risk case that you entertain uh, most aggressively right now to this case, that we're going to get a soft landing, that you're going to get business come back up, that the certainty that people have now maybe gets shattered a bit? Well, the market is being aggressive on rate, ca uh, rate cuts, all right? And I, and I believe that the Fed is going to uh, take its time, uh, especially without a recession, before they... We just, we just had rate cuts, what, 11 straight rate cuts, and what, they, we're going to have five going the other way in a matter of hikes. months. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, hikes. It's, it's okay. Oh, I confuse you. it thank all you. the time. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> uh, yields go up, prices go down, something like that. But, um, so, so, yeah, so, yeah. right. So, anyway, you know, the, the, the long <laughs> Carry on. Basically, yeah, I, I only run an investment bank. All right, what the heck? <laughs> Come but, on. Yeah, I can get that right. But, uh, but the point is, I think one of the risks are is that, uh, is that the market is priced 
pricing and some aggressive rate cuts. And that supports PEs and that supports valuations. And if you don't see that, you could see some of the PEs and the big tech stocks get, get uh, hurt a little bit. Um, but the real risk is probably geopolitical. And uh, I'm not sure. All they're talking about here in Davos is, it's my first time, is, you know, this is the epicenter of globalization. Yet, if anything, uh, we're fraying at 80 years of Bretton Woods and globalization. And, and that could have, uh, you know, uh, geopolitical and real tensions could have uh, impact on the market that it's not discounting today. There's no way. So given that backdrop, where do you see the biggest growth for you this year? For Steeple? You know, uh, we're going to grow everywhere and always, okay? And so, we, we, look, hey, we, I've been CEO <laughs> for a, a long time, all right? I don't know if you, I've got to let yes. you guess, but it's a long time. Uh, we started, uh, when I started, we had $100 million of revenue. Uh, today, we have $4.5 billion of revenue. So we're gaining market share. We uh, were just named J.D. Power's uh, number one advisor satisfaction. That's a big deal for us. Uh, so as I look forward, I see continued growth. Can we pick up on one spot? Yeah. The startup economy. Just felt like it got decimated in the last couple of years. We saw SVB go under certain banks, perhaps your situation, maybe looking at an opportunity there. Have you seen the startup economy pick up? Again, you were talking about a rebound in 2024. Is that happening? Well, it is. I mean, part of the part of the issue, certainly SVB didn't help. They had a big market share. They were the bank that they went to. But we, for example, have hired uh, 40, 50 people to service that market. So we have a big presence in both uh, the Valley and on the East Coast, and we're filling that void. void. And I see uh, that picking up. But what really happened in that market was all the money that, that came into the economy in 2021 just got pushed to a lot of companies that didn't need it and at valuation levels that were not sustainable. So we're working through that as these companies cap stacks get redone. Again, it's going to lead to activity in, in the business. So look, I'm optimistic. I, you can, you know, you let, well, have me back and then you can tell me how wrong I was. All right? Which, uh, or, <laughs> but I, I won't down. come. I won't come back. Don't worry, don't don't worry. But no, I, I am optimistic. I think that, uh, uh, well, look, last year wasn't fun. All right. So let's, let's uh, be clear. 